Hello everybody, welcome to Monday's Assembly. Today's Assembly is setting up our Assembly theme for the week and it's also setting up our PSHE, our Personal Social and Health Education series for the whole half term. It's about inspiring excellence and going for goals. Now, inspiring excellent is our school motto, isn't it? And we've talked about it lots of time before and we've broken it down into its two words that make up the phrase inspiring, making somebody or people want to do something or if you feel like you've been inspired, then something has really made you want to do or achieve something. And the word excellence is a synonym for really, really good. So we're talking about making ourselves really want to do the very best we can. And this half term in your PSHE lessons, you're going to be learning about going for goals, about trying hard to reach something, and what you can do if you really want to achieve something, and ways that can help you to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So, first of all, what is a goal? Well, you can take it very literally as the noun. In a football game, for example, there are two goals. There's a goal, literally a goal, at the end of each side, and you've got to kick the ball in it. You also score a goal, don't you? You get a point if you score a goal. But today we're talking about a goal as being something you want to achieve. A bit like a target. A goal is also a synonym, a word that means the same as target. And you can see in the other picture there, the young lady striding towards her goals. She's ticking off all the different things she wants to achieve. And that's what we're going to think about as being a goal today. And we might set ourselves some goals later. So I want to give you a little bit of help and support today with achieving your goals because I know lots of you are learning in, dif in a different way at the moment. It might be you need some goals. So I've got three steps for you. Step one. I'm just going to move my I'm just going to move my head above the subtitles so that we could all read the subtitles too. Step one. Practice. And I've spelled practice with an S there because I want it to be a verb. You've got to do something. Practice doing something over and over again. So you can see there, for example, if you want to practice your darts, you might have to practice all those blue times before you get the middle of the dartboard with that red dart. And I'll prove to you that practice works and you can get you all to do something really simple this morning or today, whenever you're watching this. I can prove that practice works really quickly and really well if you're up for it. So I'm going to teach you to do this. It actually looks really simple, but lots of people can't do this. Lots of people can't do this at all. But obviously, because I practice it, I can make it look really easy. One thumb, one finger, one thumb, one finger, and you keep switching them over as fast as you can. Now, when I started doing this, I learned it from somebody who was on stage in a festival, and he bet that he couldn't get us all doing it within four minutes, and he did. At the beginning, we were all like this. You couldn't get it right. That's probably what you're doing right now. Start with one thumb, one finger, one sticking up, one sticking out. Slowly put the thumb down. Slowly stick the finger out. Slowly pull the finger in. Slowly stick the thumb up. And then repeat it in the other direction. And I practiced. And I practiced. And I practiced for four minutes. And at the end of the four minutes, I could do it. And I have never forgotten how to do it ever since. I don't practice it every day by any means, but I've never forgotten it because I practiced it so much for four minutes, it's stuck in my brain and I can do it really easily as fast as I want. So at some point today, spend four minutes over and over and over and over again. It'll drive you crazy by the end of it and then you can show me when you get back to school that because of practice, you learnt something new. Now, I will accept that being able to do this is not a particularly helpful life skill. But still, it does prove that when you practice something, you can get good at it really quite quickly. Some things do take more than four minutes of practice, don't they? But step one, when it comes to reaching a goal, is to practice. Now. Being able to do this is not a particularly exciting goal, so let's think about it in terms of another goal. 
Um, I wanted to learn to paddleboard last year. I wanted to learn to be able to stand up paddleboard. Hmm, they seem to have missed my head out of that photo. Never mind. So I wanted to learn to paddleboard. Now that's a slightly more useful skill, isn't it? That's, a, that's an example of a goal. I couldn't paddleboard at all. I wanted to be able to do something that I couldn't already do. That's a good example of a goal. I had a target for myself to be able to operate a stand-up paddleboard. So here's step two with how to reach one's goals. Step two is break it down. Don't just jump on a paddleboard and start paddling. Break it down into chunks. And these are the chunks that it was that I found out I should break it down into. Start by lying down on the board, get your balance. Once you've got your balance lying down, try kneeling. Try kneeling nice and flat on the board. And then eventually try standing up. Okay. Let's see how I got on. Uh, okay. Step one. Lying down. It's actually pretty steady. Step two. Knees. Oh. 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 Uh, it's not as steady. It is cold. I think I've got it. Step three. Feet. Step one foot. I think I've got it. I've cracked it. I've cracked it. Okay, so so granted, breaking it down into chunks doesn't isn't always all you need to do in order to succeed with reaching one's goal. That's why step three is, is learn from our mistakes. You're not going to crack something first time. So step three is learn from your mistakes. And I think I did. I at least made a mistake today. Um, so hopefully I'll learn from that. And next time, next time I'll be a little bit better at standing up. I think I've got knees kneeling down cracked though. So I've still I've still got better than I was than I was yesterday. I've made some progress towards my goal. Okay, let's see if I can give you some more helpful examples now. Let's see if I can give you some. Let's see if I can give you some more helpful, famous examples. Um, I wonder if you can recognise this person's legs. Can you recognise who he is just from those legs? Lots of you will. Isn't that crazy to be so to have such famous legs that people can recognise you just from your legs, just from your knees and your socks? But this guy is really, really, really famous. So famous that people recognise him just from that photo. Here's a slightly more, um, here's a slightly easier photo for me. Lots of you will know this chap. His name's Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, and he's a really good example of somebody who's good at something because of practice. Despite what some people believe, this guy was not born being able to play football. He is arguably better than anybody else at playing football. He's arguably better than anybody has ever been at playing football. And it's not because he, he just arrived on planet Earth with these amazing gnarly football school. He's, no, that's not how it happens. It happened through practice. Um, and if um, if you've read the book that I shared in assembly not long ago, um, Football All-Stars, and Christiana was an example of one of them in there, um, it tells you about how he was a young a young man growing up in Cape Verde, which is some, some islands off the coast of Africa that are owned by Portugal, and then moving to Portugal and playing football for a team called Sporting Lisbon. And as a, a young man, he used to try and practice step overs. Now, lots of you might be quite good at stepping over the ball as quickly as you can. And he wanted to be better than anybody else in the world at step overs. So he set himself this goal. I am going to be the best footballer in the world at step overs. Nobody is going to be able to do them as fast as me. So what he did is he strapped weights to his legs to make his legs extra heavy. And he did as many step overs as he possibly could. And he got so good at doing step overs with the big heavy weights on his legs that when he took the big heavy weights off his legs, his legs moved even faster because they were lighter. And he practiced this over and over again until he became the person 
with the most step-up skills in the world of football. And it wasn't long before we could apply that to other things as well. Well, if I practice taking free kicks more than anybody else, I'll be the best in the world at taking free kicks. And if I practice my heading more than anybody else in the world, I'll be the best at heading the football. He's an interesting example of single-mindedness. He practices football all the time. It's all he thinks of. He just keeps practicing his football. And because of that, he's better than anybody else at it. So he's a bit of a real-life example of how practice makes perfect. It helps you reach your goals. Here's another example for step two. Do you remember step two? Step two was breaking it down. Break it down into manageable chunks. Now it's really famous at the moment that lots of people, I think I've dried off now, lots of scientists all over the world have been working hard to find a vaccine. If you saw last week's assembly about coronavirus, you'll know that the vaccine is something lots of us are talking about at the moment. Vaccines and inoculations are a way of making people resistant to viruses. If you have a vaccine against something, you probably won't catch that disease. Some of you will have had a vaccine against chickenpox to stop you getting chickenpox. And lots of you had a vaccine against flu last term. You had a spray go up your nose and that's going to stop you from getting the flu this winter. Well, scientists have had to fight really hard to develop a vaccine for coronavirus, but they have succeeded by breaking it down. They didn't just go to the laboratory, look at the coronavirus and then come up with a medicine that's probably going to beat it. No, they had to test it in lots of different ways first. They tried testing it on animals, on mice, ferrets, monkeys, and then the next phase of their trials to see if it would work is on a small number of volunteers, then on a bigger number of volunteers, and then a large group, so giving thousands of people the vaccine. And the final step, that's phase four on the picture there, is to give it to millions of people to try and stop the virus from spreading. And that's the phase we're moving into now. Because scientists broke this goal down into chunks, they were able to do each chunk and now they've succeeded in developing a vaccine which will be life-changing in the next few months. Very impressive indeed. So step one, practice. Step two, break it down into chunks. Step three, learn to learn from your mistakes. It's unlikely many of you will recognise this chap from his face. His name's Hugh Gilmore. His name's Hugh Gilmore. He's not particularly famous, but he is successful in something many of you will have heard of. Last year in the Fortnite World Championships, you've probably heard of the, of the video game Fortnite. It's the most popular video game there is at the moment. Last year in the World Champions of it, World Championships, Hugh Gilmore was the coach for the teenager who won. He was also the coach for the teenager who came second. He was also the coach for the teenager who came third. He coached the top three Fortnite players in the whole world. When you think about how many millions of people play Fortnite, being the best in the world at it is quite impressive and he coached people to get there. Now Hugh was a Fortnite player himself. He tried really hard to get into the World Cup, but he failed. And he failed again. And he failed again. He just couldn't get into the World Championships himself. But he thought, I think I know what to do. I'm just not fast enough at doing it myself. So he started watching other people play and he noticed that he was really, really good at spotting other people's mistakes. He'd watch them playing on YouTube. I know some, some of you quite like watching people playing video games on YouTube. So he'd watch other people playing Fortnite on YouTube and he'd notice where they went wrong. And he'd give them a little bit of advice. Hey, try doing it this time, this way next time. Thanks, they'd say. 
and they all started improving and he realised he was a pretty good coach. I'm not sure he's particularly brilliant with money though because the three people who came first, second and third in the Fortnite Championships last year are all multi-millionaires now. Hugh Gilmore charged them all $120 each. And I think he should have probably charged a little bit more or asked for a percentage of the fee, but he didn't. But bad luck, Hugh. So those are some examples and some good steps, one, two and three, for how you can reach your goals. So let's try and apply that to ourselves now. Let's think about that ourselves. What kind of goals could we set? You could set a goal to become a free reader. You could set a goal to read five books by Easter or learn your twos, fives and tens in your time tables. You want to be able to run a long way without stopping, maybe three kilometres. Maybe you want to be brave enough to perform a musical instrument in front of your friends or learn all of your spellings. Or you could make it a much more local goal a much more short-term goal. Your goal could be, today, I'm going to email three pieces of work to my teacher. It might be that today, I'm not going to be distracted by watching television more than once while I'm doing my home learning. I'm only gonna play one hour of computer games today, and the rest of the time I'm gonna be doing my home learning. I'm only gonna eat seven chocolate biscuits that are left over from Christmas today. That was one of my goals last week. If you're going to succeed though, you need a plan. And your plan needs to involve practice, breaking it down into steps, and learning from mistakes. So, in the same folder on the home learning website where you found this assembly, is also a whole school challenge, a going for goals challenge. Pick yourself a goal and show your goal to your teacher in the form of a presentation. You might draw some steps and on each one you'll write down what you're going to need. You might draw a target board full of all the things you need to practice if you're going to be able to succeed in your goal. You might make a roadmap for the journey to your goal or design a board game that's based on achieving your goal. But see if you can take part in our whole school challenge this week for PSHE. Inspiring excellence, going for goals. What do you want to achieve? Something small or something big? and what might you need to do to achieve it. Thanks for listening to me today. Good luck with all your home learning today and this week. And good luck if you're working in school this week too. I look forward to seeing lots of you there. Please remember, all of that hard work you're putting in, your teachers want to see it. So keep getting your parents to email it in so your teachers can see it and they can give you a few bits of feedback for it too. I know lots of you will be involved in live Zoom sessions as well this week and we'll be seeing each other on the screen much like this, so please look forward to those too. Thanks again for listening to me this morning. Have a really good rest of the day. Goodbye now.